and welcome to this episode of FYI, I'm Andrew Rogers. The School of Arts, Media and Communications has graduated many students who have gone on to have very successful careers right here in St. Louis. Alex Ferrario is one such alumnus who is now at KMOX and he joins me today on FYI. Hey Alex. Andrew, thanks for having me on, man. It's great to be here. Hey, pink's a great color on you, just so you know. Well, what can I say? You know? It's, and the hair it's is the, it's the business. Yeah. It's you're, the business. You're snazzy. Not as, you know, you didn't wear a tie, so I guess I kind of no, beat you there. I'm not the host, so I don't need a tie. <laughs> anyway, being a host, you have to be a broadcaster, right? You're a broadcaster. <laughs> true. When you went through Lindenwood, what got you interested in broadcasting? Well, sports was the biggest thing for me. Uh, in high school, I knew that I wanted to be a part of broadcasting. Somehow, I wanted to be involved with sports. I realized that I was the most unathletic person in the world, so broadcasting was the next best thing to be around athletes and interview athletes and be a part of sports. And so I knew that was the avenue that I wanted to go to. And, you know, the idols that I had here in St. Louis, like Dan McLaughlin and Randy Carricker and Ken Wilson at the time, were all. Well, Ken Wilson wasn't. But everyone else was Lindenwood graduates. And so I knew that this was a spot for me where I'd have the opportunity to be involved with broadcasting. And it didn't disappoint. I mean, the moment I walked through the doors and met with Mike Wall and met with everybody in the broadcast department, I, I think the first week that I started, I was on a high school football game. So I was calling sports. I did football, basketball, everything from generic sports to out of the I did a gymnastics broadcast, and it was something that I've never done before. So uh, sports was what I wanted to be a part of, and Linda would, gave me that opportunity right away. And when you went into your first high school football broadcast, because I can't think, you know, every broadcaster has a story like this. <laughs> when did you say your first words on air? My, like, when did I actually When did you speak? first start talking? Well, I was the color commentator for that game. And I have never done color for a football game at all. Like, I know football, but I don't know it as an analyst. And so it's a great story that my dad still never lets me live down. We were broadcasting the game, and it was like an 80-yard run or something like that for a touchdown. And I used the word zonage. Very cool. Yeah, and it's not a word. And I had text messages that night from my dad saying, did you just make up a word in a broadcast? And I said, what are you talking about? He goes, look up zonage and see if it's an actual word. It's not. And so from then on, I'm like, well, maybe I need to concentrate on using proper grammar when I'm on the, well, on the air. But yeah, that was my first one, actually, of ever being on the radio, ever calling a game that wasn't into a microphone, you know, just for my personal game being actually on the radio was a, a high school football game it was francis howell north against francis howell west west i believe I don't, or no central, central it was central okay. so it was north versus central that was my first game i can't believe you still remember that and i can't you still remember either. making up a word yeah. so it, there's at least one mistake that everybody always remembers right. when i was what i was gonna get to is when i called my first high school football mm -hmm. game color as well you know not a color yeah. commentator i uh didn't say my first words until about six minutes into uh the first quarter your play-by-play -play man must have hated you for that. <laughs> he was just going and i'm just sitting there like not in my head i'm like i was gonna say that but uh <laughs> you took that so i'm not gonna sound dumb i'm not yeah. gonna make up a word or anything like that Hey, man, it, it, it was a learning experience for me because then I knew it's like, well, you're going to make mistakes as you go through it. you got to make mistakes to get better at it. And I, I'm, I'm happy. You know, I kept that broadcast, and I still have it on, uh, on an MP3 to listen to just to kind of listen to what I used to be like and how much I've grown since. And I think anybody has to do that when they go through this career. Keep everything that you've done. Don't get rid of it because it was bad because you got to find out what you did wrong to grow from that. Yeah, and you know, whenever you go through a situation like that, you just got to put that yeah. thing behind you because you're yeah. like, that's not really who I am. Like, right. I, I say things a lot better than that. Um, <laughs> talk to, uh, just real fast, how Linda would have uh, prepared you for your job at KMLX. Well, it gave me the opportunities of doing everything that's involved with this career path. I mean, you know, first of all, internships is the biggest thing to get into. But beyond that, Linda would gave me the opportunity of saying that I've done this before. I've been a part of this before. I've done television. I've done radio. But beyond that, it, it built the relationships that you need to Build. You know, it, it, you're you're working with people that have been in the career field. You're working with people that have done this before, so you know what goes into this. And you have a, a demo reel. I mean, in broadcasting, you can't get anywhere unless you have a demo reel. And Lindenwood, unlike other schools where you don't have that right away, I had three years of stuff by the time I graduated of different elements that I was a part of. 
Yeah, and definitely, especially for my instance, too. I mean, I, I have a demo reel. Everybody has to have a demo reel when you go into your first job, and that really sets you apart from, from every other yeah. candidate that's going in, also trying to build a resume just like you and, and try to get you that. When we come back, I want to get your thoughts on, you know, best memories here. So next, we're going to have Alex share some of his fun memories and stories from his time at Lindenwood. You won't want to miss it. That's next on FYI. fatalities resulted from this horrible crash because everyone was wearing their seatbelt. Make sure you also arrive alive. Buckle up before you put the car in gear. Welcome back. We're talking with Alex Ferrario. He's a Lindenwood alumnus, now working at KMOX, and I want to know about his time at Lindenwood. So, first, <laughs> let's get your most embarrassing memory, whether that you, you was talking on the radio or you were yeah. sitting in a desk like this talking on TV. Think back to the most embarrassing thing that you've said. Oh, I have many of them, um, specifically that happened here at the table on television, but I'll give you my two favorite ones. Uh, one of them was when I was doing LUTV News. We were doing our weekly news broadcast, and I was anchoring. This was the first time I've ever anchored. And if you've ever done this before, you know, there's a lot of moving around. So I'm on the news desk, I'm talking, and then I have to move over to sports during a commercial break. I didn't know that the commercial break didn't happen yet. So while we're still on air, while my co-host is staring at the camera, I stand up in the middle of the broadcast. This was live news. I stand up and I walk off camera <laughs> like an idiot. Uh, so that was really embarrassing. But the one that still has never lived me down... Um, we did a Lion Pride sports show. It's a, it was a weekly sports show we did here at Lindenwood. And so I pulled a Ron Burgundy. And if anybody has ever seen Anchorman, they understand what I'm talking about. A Ron Burgundy is when you read what the teleprompter straight says. Straight from it. Straight <laughs> from it. So basically the, the producer and director taught me a lesson. The story was a cardinal story, and it was talking about a walk-off winner for Matt Carpenter. And in the story, they put in that Matt Carpenter was the sexiest Cardinals player on the roster. And so I'm reading this story of Matt Carpenter hitting a walk-off home run for the Cardinals, a big victory, and Matt Carpenter, the sexiest Cardinals player, said this. And I didn't even know what happened. Because you were just reading straight Read it through. through. We finished it, and Ron Burgundy asked, I'm sitting there looking through the papers like, man, we knocked that out of the park. And my buddy, my buddy Brett, who was hosting with me at the time, looks at me and he's like, do you know what you just said? I'm like, what? He's like, you just called Matt Carpenter sexy. I'm like... Oh, okay, let's redo it. So, uh, so that one, and, and they posted it on YouTube in a blooper reel, and I think you could probably still find nice. it if you Google or YouTube Lion Pride Sports blooper reel. That's on there of me calling Matt Carpenter sexy. Well, I almost pulled a Ron Burgundy one time. I was doing an LUTV newscast, and on the prompter, they did not change from the old um, sports host um, or sports anchor yeah. uh, Desiree Clayton. So it said like at the end, you know, like for LUTV Sports, I'm Desiree Clayton. So I'm reading through and you know, like just what you said, you're getting deep into the yeah. stories, your vision starting to blur up a little bit and you're just kind of running and going yeah. and I'm getting to the end and I almost stuttered because I hesitated because I saw it and I'm yeah. like, you're not Desiree Clayton as I'm reading it. And I was like, for LUTV Sports, I'm... Andrew Rogers. <laughs> yeah. well, you, you at least did that. I didn't do that. I just straight through Matt Carpenter, the sexiest player. So yeah, well, at least you didn't say down. a different name or almost say a different Well, at least name. Matt Carpenter doesn't watch uh, LUTV and realize that I called him sexy and now I have to deal with him on a daily basis. Well, but that's good. Well, speaking of an unsexy team, you cover the Blues. How about them this season? <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that's the perfect way to describe it as an unsexy team right now. Yeah, it's frustrating. Because uh, not only do I cover the team, but I'm a huge fan of the Blues. I've been a huge fan of the Blues for a long time. And they are an underperforming team right now. I don't know if it will get fixed. People call it a lost season. There's still a lot of hockey to be played. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's a frustrating season right now going from winning a game to losing a game to losing two to winning one. So I don't know if there's an end in sight, and I try and provide Blues fans with as much optimism as possible. But, again, I'm just as much of a fan as I am a host, and i got to try and toe that line. 
but it gets frustrating on my end as well to try and not uh, take it out on the on the team after what uh, what you see on the ice that night. And unfortunately, I wish I could get more of that take, <laughs> but we're out of time. It's probably good you can't have more of that take. <laughs> right. I'd like to thank my guest Alex Ferrario, and I'd like to thank you for watching this episode of FYI. I'm Andrew Rogers. We'll see you next time. Thank you.